Today, we're going to learn about Golang's absolute worst feature, naked returns. This feature is confusing in the context of Golang because one of the guiding principles of Golang's design is that less is exponentially more. And that statement might be confusing if you're not familiar with it, but effectively, Go is just trying to say, hey, we're not going to allow you to do infinite combinatorics of different features. Instead, what we're going to do is say, hey, you want to loop over something? We've got for loops. Hey, you'd like to put something in a struct? We've got structs. Hey, you'd like to make an interface of something? Oh, well, we have interfaces. That's all Go is going to allow you to do. Less is exponentially more. Quick aside, while I think this feature should really be going, going, gone, I actually really like Go. I think this principle of less is exponentially more is one of the defining features of why I like writing Go and why I like writing it with a bunch of other people at a company, which we could talk about more in a different video. This video is just about one particular aspect of Go that I think really detracts from that simplicity. So let's get going with the rest of the video. Additionally, I'll present this without comment that on the tour of Go, it's noted that naked returns can harm the readability of longer functions. However, I'll also kind of show that I think it harms the readability of short functions too. But, 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 start with some basic syntax in case you're not familiar, but we're going to move quickly. So what we've got here is a function definition. The name comes before the type in Golang. That's the opposite of C. And then we can say the return type in Go, you're allowed to return multiple values. So we basically just do something stupid inside here. So it's simple to follow. Divide the number by two, subtract the first one. And now we're going to return these multiple values. When we run this function, you can see it returns eight and nine. If we change this to like 25, it's going to turn 12 and three. It gets passed as two different values into print line. That's the basics of what's happening. But now let's see where things start to get a little bit trickier. Go has a feature called named return values. This feature enables you to, instead of having to initialize a variable manually, Golang will automatically initialize that variable and set it to the default for that type. In this case, that would look something like saying that X and Y should both be here. Go tells us, hey, you've actually already initialized a variable called X and Y. So you can't set this as a new variable below. That's what this colon equals is. So we can remove the colons. When we run this, we'll see that we get the same result. But if we comment these out, what we'll see is the zero values or the default values for each of these types for the named return values. In addition, Go allows us to omit the type information if multiple values in a row are of the same type. This just means that instead of having to type int for both X and Y, we can actually just say X, Y. This will still compile and return us the same results. And if we uncomment these lines back out, we'll see that we still get the 12 and 13 that we expected before. And now we're able to go ahead and talk about what are naked returns. I just want to preface this with if you have a weak stomach, now may be the time to close your eyes or pause the video or maybe get some antacid or Tom's. It's going to get difficult here. The naked return is whenever we say go away to whatever variables are on the line for a return statement. It can only be used in functions with named return values. So if what we do is re we remove these, we're able to run it and still get the same values just to show that I'm not tricking you. We can change this value, we get new results. So you might be thinking at this point, that doesn't look so bad. What could possibly go wrong? How could anyone abuse that? Well, let's just look at some examples. In this function, if you're just scrolling through and you're kind of looking around, you'll just see these empty returns. And I really couldn't blame you if you thought this function didn't return anything. Goes very explicit, always has only one way to do everything, except that this function has named return values, which means that this return actually returns whatever the current value of ret and error are, which is really weird. Because if, for example, ret was mutated, there's no way to track that in the type system, then, you might accidentally return not a nil or default value and an error, you could return both, which means that someone who's consuming this might not do what they're expecting to see. Not only is this confusing in larger functions, I think the whole semantics of a bunch of what's here is confusing when you're expecting things to work just like the rest of Golang. For example, if we tried to make a variable, we just called it unused and we set it to true. Golang would complain and it would say, hey, unused is declared but not used however if we did something like this and changed this value to say unused 
and then x we just declared inside of the function and we ran this it's totally fine with that which is really weird because you would think you should get an error or a warning for saying that you've never used this variable that you declared which would be how things would normally work and would let you know that there's no reason for this variable to be named at all. And lastly, even if you're moving to this sort of incrementally, I still think the whole syntax and the readability and legibility of it, even in small functions, is very confusing. Consider the example where we start adding things like x and y as two named parameters here. So we need to do just like we did before and remove these, and then we change back to a naked return, right? So this would be the naked return with two named return values, just the way you'd normally expect. You run this, you get 13. Once again, we can move this up to show that we've gotten the different values. However, suppose that now what you wanted to do was you wanted to return a Boolean at the beginning. So you're just thinking, okay, I'm just going to add a bool because it's, it's Golang. I just want to add my Boolean. You press enter, you write it, and it works just fine. As the trees that are highlighting in NeoVim suggests to me, oh, bool is actually the name of something and not the type of something. And so now I recognize, oh my goodness, if I tried to set bool equals true, that would be an error. And it says, hey, bool is actually an int, not this. So we would need to set it to something like five, and then it would be returned. So there's just like, in my mind, a whole lot of confusion with this named things, with putting them inside of this list of stuff, with just implicitly returning them and not even erring when you don't use them. Golang doesn't give you any hint that you're not using that variable. Ultimately, I just find the myriad ways that you can combine this feature to write confusing code and that you can clash with someone else on your team's preferred style. When in Golang, all of those things are supposed to be solved for you. To mark this as basically Golang's worst feature for me thus far, excluding that you can panic on nils, but I mean, that's just a mistake, not a feature. Overall, I really like writing Golang. I like writing it for work, but it's just random stuff like this that feels like, go, why would you have added this feature? Why not go back to the drawing board and do it right? It feels like for everyone who added this feature, it's like, go straight to jail, do not pass go. All these problems for what? So that you can save writing var x and var y at the beginning of a function and returning those? It just doesn't seem worth it and the trade-off seems super wrong. Ultimately, that's why this gets the stamp of worst feature of Golang for me. Thanks, everybody. Leave a comment. If you think there's a worst feature of Go, let me know if there's something that I missed. Hope you all enjoyed this. And I still love Go. It's okay. See you, everybody.